Well guys, it's a cold, miserable day. <laughs> it's rain falling outside. So I figured since I'm done with work, I may as well swing out to the garage and do a project that's not necessarily very interesting or significant, but something I've been putting off for a long time. And that is the light bar install on the electric Fiat. You guys remember a couple of years ago when I had my gray gas Fiat, I did a light bar a little bit bigger. I did one of these inside of the front grill and I really miss it. So today, that's what I'm doing. And I cleaned up a little bit. <laughs> this garage is an absolute dream, it's incredible. I wish it were mine, <laughs> but wow. I'm uh, planning to get out later this week and actually work on the 2002 again. Don't worry, I still have it. I still need to work on it. It's on my radar. <laughs> and currently it's occupying the only two post lift I have access to, which is a big deal. I will get to that too. There will be series on this car, but it's gonna be probably on my personal Eric Berger channel. It probably won't be on Oval Bore. So I'll let you know when that's happening. But uh, for today, we're putting a light bar in the electric Fiat. Well, hopefully this video doesn't just sound like rain. The gutter's right there. Here is the front of this thing off. I'm not even gonna bother showing you guys how to take the front bumper off, because you A, probably don't care, B, probably don't have a Fiat, and C, there's already really good DIYs on that. If you care, just two corner bolts, a bunch of Phillips, a bunch of Torx, it's super easy, so. Anyway, <laughs> I was noticing this down here. This is the uh, mandated below 15 miles per hour in gear speaker that makes that little whirring noise, so. I'll be getting rid of that for sure. And here we have the nice space for our wicked light bar. And it looks like the thing fits pretty much mint. So I don't know. I'm probably still going to have to file down the back of this a little bit just to get the best fit. Oops, sorry. The best fit out of it. But honestly, pretty stoked with how that fits. And I might elect to just trim the back side of the bumper instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zip tie this thing up, fit the bumper on, see where I'm hitting, and then uh, trim it, see where we're at. Well, as it turns out, I don't have zip ties, so I'm gonna do it the exact same way I did it with the old Fiat, which was wire. I just tied some wire up. I'm gonna lightly toss this bumper back on and see where we're hitting, and determine if I need one or both types of trimming to make this fit. Uh, I'm gonna have to drop it down a little bit, but honestly, I don't think I'll need to trim it at all. The bumper has enough flex to it, <laughs> or I think it'll fit. Hmm. That's good news, I guess. It looks like it's gonna fit pretty well. I'm just gonna trim a little bit of excess off this bracket, drill a new hole for it, and then it's honestly almost in the right spot to get it everything to through bolt it as well, so. I don't know, I'm optimistic. The brackets hang it down just a hair more, and I think that's exactly where I want it to be. This is like stock. So I started drilling holes to bolt this thing in like I did last time, and I only brought like four drill bits, and they're all totally, totally toast. So I'm like, oh, right, the core support is steel. These brackets are steel. The welder's down here. So this is just tack welded right now. Two little baby tack welds. I'm gonna throw the bumper cover back on it. It doesn't make any contact at all, which is nice, so I can actually angle this up to do more blinding than ever before when people do cut you off in your tiny car. So I'm gonna angle it up just a hair, throw the cover on, and see where it lands. You would swear this was made for the car. <laughs> it sits absolutely perfectly. No modification necessary. I'm gonna pull the cover back off. Surround weld everything. See if I can find a little bit of paint around here just to keep it from uh, rusting. I think I've got touch up paint just to keep the core support from rusting, I mean. And then time for wiring. I did already run the whip up into the engine bay. Pretty easy. I believe there's a main lug inside here we can take advantage of. Otherwise, there's a battery right there. And I'm gonna pull the power off the headlight, which plugs right here. So we'll go over that. Um, shortly. Well, I don't have a multimeter down here somehow, so I did some good old-fashioned detective work. Found that green is our high beam trigger, and that's all we need off of this. We're going to ground elsewhere, so uh, carefully splice into that, depending on how much you care about your car. 
And we're gonna uh, bring a wire over from that, use some nice primary wire, and we're gonna get a standard automotive 12 volt relay. And I've got one of those right here. <laughs> And what we're gonna use this for is turning a small amount of current switch into a large amount of current switch. So there's a diagram on it right there. Our coil's 85 and 86, and we're closing 30 and 87 together. And they are not labeled. Super. Uh, I may pull the relay off and see if they're labeled on the bottom. Basically all this is is it's an electromagnetic coil. Oh, here we go. You can see the bigger wires are the load, the smaller wires are the contact. So we go with probably black is uh, ground, white is probably positive. I'll click it on the battery just to make sure. Then we'll have current in from the battery with a fuse on the blue one probably and out on the green one or vice versa. We'll try it out and see what works best. So I just got everything hooked up. Nothing is uh, tidied or finalized, but it's not gonna be too far away from how this actually ends up looking. So let me walk you through what I've got. Uh, ground, wherever you have ground. I'm choosing something in the powertrain because that's usually really well grounded. I've got the light bar negative and the relay coil negative on that. On the positive in here, I've got a 15 amp fuse and a holder and that goes over to my uh, load in, positive, whatever, on the relay. Load out on the green, I've got going straight out to the positive on the light bar. And then my coil positive, I have running over here, get this little yellow wire, over to here, into a vampire splice, which I hate, but whatever. It works really well for this situation. And that's tied into the green wire for the high beam. So right now, I'm gonna try to set up the phone and then activate all this so you can see it working. So there you have it. Successful light bar installation. You can tidy it up as much more or as little more as you want. I'm gonna try to find a lighter to heat shrink all my little butt connectors here, but it's solid. Primo, ready to go. It's a great mod if you are on rural roads a lot, or if you're in a tiny car and you get cut off a lot and you just wanna give people the, uh, the photon equivalent of a middle finger. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna toss the bumper back on now. And uh, I'll show you again how it looks once it's all buttoned up back together. Well, I really can't set the dang thing up to show you, but uh, that's what it looks like. Fitment is pretty good, and it works perfectly, so I'm all for that. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, catch you next time. It's still daytime, but... Gotta love it.